Teresa, I went ahead and uh, promoted um, Jim Lang's phone number too, to be able to speak. Okay, great. And Gary's just popped on. Yeah, I'll push him over as well to talk. Hey, we are now called to order. Good evening, everybody. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen. Here. Councilwoman Matson. Here. Councilwoman Vargas. Here. Councilman Peterson. Here. Councilman Bell. Here. Councilman Here. Costello. Here. Councilman Carlson. Here. Thank you. Please stand for a pledge of allegiance and remain standing for prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Do we have um, Pastor Alicia McClintock with us tonight? Okay. Um, Kevin, would you uh, mind giving prayer tonight? Uh, unmute, Kevin. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to come together to do the work for Sila. Lord, I ask that you give us wisdom, that we uh, make the decisions that uh, promote our city, that uh, give us opportunities for growth and to make it a place that uh, people love to live. Lord, uh, be with each and every one of us. I pray these things through Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. 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 Thank you, Kevin. Agenda changes. Items 0, 2, and 0, 3 were amended earlier today with copies provided to council um, via email and uploaded to the website. And that the two items had also flipped spots as the 2021 salary ordinance required approval prior to approval of the 2021 budget. Public appearances, introductions, and presentations. Um, Katrina Hinkle. Hey, good afternoon, everyone, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, the, the lighted trucks were delightful on Friday. I hope you all got to see those. Um, we posted a video as well on the SDA Facebook page, just in case. Um, there's rumors they may make another couple of appearances in SELA, but if you want to see them, check out Yakima Christmas Trucks page on Facebook and they'll post where they're going to be next. They won't show their route necessarily, but they'll give you a general idea. Um, so there's that. Today, Governor Inslee announced that he would extend the current shutdown through January 4th. So I want to just remind you all, it is more important now than ever to remember to support our small businesses and restaurants um, through carry out, through order, you know, gift cards for Christmas presents or whatever they sell. Just please remember that that supports your neighbors. Um, Chief Christman is continuing to do meet and greets with the business owners on Zoom. Uh, this week will be restaurants. And so that'll be Thursday. And they've gone really well so far. Uh, there's not a ton of attendance, which means a more intimate group. And he really gets a chance to kind of chat with people. So um, watch your emails if you're business owners, or if you haven't seen your email, contact the SDA so we can get you signed up. Um, and I think that might be it. All right. Thank you, Katrina. The, Thanks, guys. The Christmas boxes around town look great. Nice job. 
Oh yes, I forgot to mention we boxes. did put out some gnomes. <laughs> yes, they they look very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, getting to know our business, we have none. Communications, Mr. Case. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> We're presently conducting the regular meeting portion of today's session. State law does not require a non-charter code city, such as the city of Sela, to allot time for public comment during a regular meeting between the mayor and city council. Historically, the city has chosen to allot time for public comment during its regular meetings, subject to a maximum of two minutes per commenter and common sense standards of decorum. Recently, those standards of decorum have been increasingly infringed. Those wishing to offer public comments during a regular meeting must comply with the following process and standards. Each commenter must state his or her full name and whether he or she is a registered voter residing within the city limits of CELA. Each commenter is limited to one comment and a maximum duration of two minutes per regular meeting. A maximum of 30 minutes per regular meeting will be allotted for all public comments. Comments must be constructive and respectful. No profanity, insults, defamation, or direct or implied personal attacks will be allowed. Criticism of city policy is allowed, but personal criticism of any individual is not allowed. The public comment process is not a question and answer process. Also, each commenter should speak solely for himself or herself, rather than purporting to speak on behalf of others, repeating verbatim or nearly verbatim what another commenter has said, or repeating what a written document says. In-person comments will be heard from the podium in the order offered by commenters, and during the COVID shutdown, written comments will be read aloud in the order received by city staff, and telephonic comments may also be heard. The mayor may cut off any in-person comment or telephonic comment that he or she deems inappropriate, mm -hmm. and city staff at the direction of the mayor may disallow or modify any written comment that is deemed inappropriate. These standards are subject to revision. Those who infringe the applicable standards may be barred from offering public comments during future or regular meetings. Public comment during regular meetings is not the exclusive method to communicate with the mayor or the city council on any topic. People may send emails or letters, leave voicemails or request in-person meetings to or with the mayor or any member or members of the city council. The mayor and each member of the city council has personal discretion over how and when he or she might respond to the emails, letters, voicemails and requests for in-person meetings. Thank you. Monica. Madam Mayor, there were two comments submitted, neither of which will be read aloud. Thank you. Written, we have none. Proclamations and announcements, we have none. Consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion without discussion. Should any council member request that any item on the consent agenda be considered separately, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and become part of the regular agenda. Madam Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. And we have a motion to approve the consent agenda by uh, Mr. Peterson, a second by Ms. Max Matson. All those in favor? Okay, um, that's unanimous. Thank you, Monica. Approval of minutes, November 24, 2020 council meeting. Approval of claims and payroll. Resolution N1, resolution declaring police service weapon surplus and authorizing disposition of the same as additional consideration for service provided. Thank you, Monica. Um, public hearings. Mr. Henney. Excuse me. I'm having a uh, dropout, so I will do my best to convey this, and if not, I'll have to have Mr. Joe, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and discontinue with you trying to do this. Yeah, Joe. Finish these items. But yeah. Joe, Joe, this is Don. Your your audio is is too spotty. Jeff, are you ready to handle this? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So thank you. Again, this is uh, item council members. This is item L one. It's a public hearing to consider adoption of water use efficiency goals and measures required by the Washington State Department of Health in conjunction with the city's update of its 2021 water system comp plan. Um, basically, these water system efficiency goals are designed to help customers 
or guide customers to use water more efficiently, more efficiently reducing our overall consumption of water throughout the city um, over time. And uh, the city started its update of its water system plan in 2019. And this public hearing and then the uh, resolution that follows adopting these, these uh, goals and policies are there to, um, to ensure that we comply with the, uh, the Washington State Department of Health requirements uh, for our water system plan. And we expect that we would be bringing that water system plan back to you for final approval with the inclusion of these uh, goals and policies on uh, May of 2021. And so the staff recommendation is that you hold the open record public hearing um, and then later on in the agenda, consider the resolution. Thank you, Jeff. Or yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, okay, we are gonna now open a, a public hearing to consider the adoption of the water use efficiency goals and measures required by the Washington State Department of Health. We have any questions? Seeing no hands raised. Madam Mayor, you might want to ask if there's any member of the public that wishes to ask a question or make a statement. Yeah, I was looking over there. There's. No hands raised. Madam Mayor, wishes to ask a question or make a statement. Uh, um, I can hear somebody talking. Do we have anybody from the public that would like to ask questions on this? As a reminder, Madam Mayor, they will have to choose to raise their hand so that I can give them permission to talk. So if there's anybody who'd like to, please click raise hand and then I'll be able to unmute you. Okay. Well, seeing no hands raised from the public and no questions from the council, we will now close the public hearing. Mr. Peters, L2. Thank you again, Madam Mayor. Um, so this is again an, a, another public hearing. Um, this is regarding a land use matter uh, and a building codes matter. So this public hearing is regarding a recommendation by the City of Seelip Community Development and Planning Department, as well as the uh, City Planning Commission to adopt the uh, 2018 International Building Codes. Um, and the, the codes that are gonna be adopted include the International Building Code, the International Residential Code, Energy Code, Mechanical Existing Building, Property Maintenance, Uniform Plumbing, uh, Fire Codes, Fuel Gas Codes, and Swimming Pools and Spas. And this also includes the, the uh, Washington State amendments to those codes as well. Um, with I won't go into the uh, the full background on this as this is kind of a a, a normal item this time of year whenever we get an update to our codes. But basically, adoption of our our new uh, building codes allows us to main maintain a current standard and being compliant with Washington state law with regard to inspections of buildings and ensuring that their safety and that they're meeting the energy, energy codes and other um, building code requirements um, as required by the state. Um, with that being said, our recommendation is that you hold the required public hearing and then uh, at the con conclusion of the hearing, adopt the planning commission's findings as your own and then consider the uh, ordinance later on in the council's agenda. That's all I have. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we will now open the public hearing. Do we have questions from the council? Suzanne? Thank you. Yeah, Jeff, I was wondering how often are the international code councils, how often do they release these new codes? I see this one we're adopting the 2018. So I was curious how often they they release it. And also if you could clarify who who are they exactly? 
So the uh, let me ask the, the the first question first is that they they generally adopt these every two to four years. They amend the international building codes, and the International Code Council is a member of communities across the country that look at building code standards and they update and change the actual building codes. You know, like how far do you have to um, space your nailing patterns out for a re-roof or what the plumbing standards are for um, a residential house and what kind of size venting and things like that. Um, and then built at the different communities, uh, once the International Code Council releases those codes, then we're given usually about a year to two um, to kind of review those codes, see if we want to do any local modifications or adoption to the code um, or opt out of certain things um, if you're a larger county. Um, and then we're giving, then the, uh, at the same time that we're looking at the codes, Washington State also, uh, the Code Council reviews all of those building codes and then puts forth their amendments. Once they release their amendments, then, which is usually a, a year after um, the new codes come out, then we're required to adopt the, the following year. And so it, it always kind of follows that we're about, we're anywhere between a year to two years behind when the actual code, um, International Code Council releases their, their latest edition. Does that answer all your question? It does, thank you for the clarification. Welcome. Just one further point on that. When Mr. Peters uses the word behind, He's meaning that in a colloquial sense. We are timely on this. Uh, we will, if this is approved, have be using essentially the same version that other municipalities use, such as Yakima and other places like that. It's usually yeah. when you look at the code, it's usually at least a couple of years old seeming. So if you look at it in 2020 or 2021, it'll point back to 2018. Likewise, when we get to like 2024, it's going to be pointing back to 2021. That's the process. And Rob, Rob is exactly right. In fact, um, Glenn Denman, who is a uh, city of, of Yakima's building official, is actually in a little bit behind us. They're proposing to bring theirs, I believe, to their full council sometime in January. So we're right on time. Uh, Cliff. <clears throat> When these building codes are amended, when, I want to say, when do they take effect? When, when we, um, is it at the point of when the permit is approved? I mean, we've done some developments and things, approved some developments and things recently. Do these new codes kick in when they build or at the time of the approval? So, I mean, I guess your, your question with, uh, is, is kind of a two-part question. So the, the first part answer to your question is that um, they become effective five days from when the ordinance is published in the paper. So, and Monica, if you're listening in, um, and if I say this wrong, please correct me, but Monica will generally, if you pass this today, she will generally publish this on this Friday in this Friday's paper, um, the ordinance. So then five days from Friday, the ordinance becomes effective. So that's when the 2018 codes would be effective. Now, the second part to your question is about existing developments or, or people who have submitted building permits um, are in the process. So anybody who submitted a building plan to us that's in and it's paid for, um, then is is what we call vested um, to the 2015 building codes, which is what we had previously adopted. And so we would review their plans under the 2015 code. They would, if there's any price changes, which there isn't in this in these adoption of codes, um, they would be subject to 2015 rates. Um, so that's that's kind of how it works out. Thank you. What the hell happens here? 
Anybody else? Madam Mayor? Y yes. Um, typically, it's Thursday or Friday that it will be published. It's dependent on um, when I submit the ad and I hear back from the legal notifications at Yakima Herald that they have a specific day they can publish it in. Typically, if I submit it tomorrow, it's in Thursday's paper. If it's a really long legal ad section, they might bump it to Friday, but typically it's either Thursday or Friday. Okay. Thank you. Um, do we have anybody from the public that has any questions? If so, would you please raise your hand? Okay, I don't see anybody. Um, Council, do we have do we have a motion on this to close the public hearing and and make a motion? Madam Mayor, I believe you can just close the public hearing and any action on the ordinance would happen later on. Okay. Okay, so we are going to close the public hearing. And Rob, oh, I mean, uh, we do need them to to adopt yeah. the planning commission's findings. So, helps if I look at the right document. <laughs> okay. So there is a necessity of a motion, council members. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the planning commission's um, advisements. Second. So we have a motion to approve. I'll second. And a second, I'm sorry, was that uh, Cliff? Okay. And a second by Cliff. Monica, roll call. Councilman Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilwoman Matson. Yes. Councilwoman Vargas? Yes. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? Yes. Councilman Carlson? Uh, Russ indicated with a thumbs up that he is a yes. Yeah. Yes, That's I was having, having difficulty, sorry. That's okay. It's unanimous, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, um, L3, um, Mr. Peters, are you presenting for Mr. Henney? Um, yes, I am. I don't know if Joe is still on um, or if he's on, it got on the phone. Um, Teresa is. He is on, <clears throat> his phone number is showing up, but I, he needs to unmute. If you can hear me, Joe, you just need to unmute your phone. I'm listening best I can. Okay, if you wanna go ahead and take this one, Joe, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and do that. Yes, I just don't have enough contact. I keep skipping out. Okay, that's okay. I'll 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 take it here. If 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 I say something wrong, feel free to unmute and jump in. I guess. I'll try. Okay, so this is a public hearing to take public comment. And excuse me, council member, this is action item uh, L three. Um, so this is a public hearing to take public comment in consideration and adoption of a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign an application for federal assistance from the U.S. Department of Agricultural, Rural Development, Rural Utility Services um, for a request of uh, $2,036,290,000 uh, in funding to be used to towards the construction of the city of Sela's wastewater collection system improvement project. Um, the action requested is to hold the required public hearing. Uh, if you look down at the uh, physical impact on the agenda statement, you're going to see that there is a, a naked uh, uh, $264,000 coming out of the uh, sewer reserve fund. Um, that is to be used for engineering services and design services for these improvements. And then the loan amount, um, which makes up the, the rest of the, the total project cost, which is the $2,036,290,000, which is the USDA loan. Um, and then uh, if you look at the backgrounds and findings, we kind of, at the very, very uh, last three sentences of the agenda statement under backgrounds and findings kind of gives you the breakdown of the project total as well as how the numbers kind of play out here. So um, 
I'll turn it over to you, Madam Mayor, to open the public hearing and we can entertain questions. Thank you. Okay, we are now going to have an open public hearing. Do we have questions from the council? Uh, Mr. Carlson. Can I just get a, a brief overview of what portions of improvements this is uh, affecting uh, at the wastewater treatment facility? Not the facility. I'm sorry? This, this, uh, this is not the facility. It's a collection. It's our collection system uh, over a number of our streets. Uh, I believe uh, we presented this to you before. Uh, I don't know if Joe can get through, but I'm going to I'm going to step back, but it's our collection system, not our sewage treatment plant. Joe, can you get through? So I, I don't think he's coming through here. So this, this project is related to the improvements we did as a State Environmental Policy Act review for, which includes uh, improvements to uh, sewer um, improvements, running up and down Railroad Avenue, expanding some pipe, a connection and there's a couple of cross streets that I don't have that particular SEPA opened up. Um, but basically it's going to go and bring uh, capacity, carrying capacity back to the wastewater treatment plant. We have several different uh, bottlenecks throughout town um, th through that railroad avenue corridor and some of those uh, side streets. And so this is to go into those areas, um, break up some of the right of way, um, go in and put in those, those improvements for the wastewater system and then restore the, the roadway back to a uh, uh, drivable surface. And, and if I might add, this is some of our oldest uh, infrastructure, which we're going through and, and, and upgrading over, you know, a, a, on a, a scheduled type basis. Uh, I believe we presented this about six months ago as a project and uh, um, uh, our, our engineers have, have uh, already presented a report on this. I hope Joe can uh, chime in because he may have more to say about this. Um, if you give me two seconds, Don, I can find that SEPA review really quick here. Um, Starts at Fremont and Forth to Natchez and then Natchez across the city hall and down to Railroad Avenue and then Railroad Avenue down to the wastewater treatment plant. We got you, Joe. Suzanne? Could you clarify for me the, the $2 million loan through the USDA? I see it also referred to as federal funding. Do we repay that in its entirety or how exactly does that work? Is a 2.75% interest. Two point seven five percent interest. That that they're they're charging on top of that money. So we repay the full amount plus the two point seven five percent interest. I believe that loan is over twenty years, uh, Councilwoman Vargas. That uh, and we will pay that yearly. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any questions from the public? If so, would you um, please raise your hand? Seeing none, council, do you have any more questions? All right, thank you. We're now going to close the public hearing. Um, general business, we have none. Old business, we have none. Resolutions. Uh, Mr. Novobelsky. Yep. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. So uh, M2 is a resolution to establish the 2021 water utility service rates. And uh, uh, what this uh, resolution does is it implements a 3% rate increase 
uh, as discussed in the AIS, it uh, discloses the amount of impact for uh, different uh, levels of customers. And uh, I would uh, welcome any question. Mr. Carlson. Uh, Dale, can you give me a, a feel as to why? Uh, the only why, the only background I've seen is uh, rate increase was determined appropriate for the water fund. What is it that's going up uh, so dramatically that we need to have that 3% increase, Dale? Yeah, uh, as uh, I believe we've discussed previously that Joe has Hubert C. Lohman maintain a water comp plan which goes out, I don't know, 20 years or better. And uh, within that, they forecast certain improvements and they project uh, increases in costs and they estimate what they believe should be the uh, required increase in rates in order to maintain cash flows. And uh, uh, I always go to Joe each year and I ask him what kind of rate increases he's looking for and I believe he consults that document. And for the current year, Joe requested a 3% rate increase in water. And if I might add, this, this is uh, strictly uh, in adherence with our comprehensive plan. Our comprehensive plan tries to anticipate every eventuality, uh, but we can't. Uh, and I'll, I'll be um, uh, sad to report to you that one of our pumps went out uh, yesterday evening over at uh, pump four. Uh, at well four. So this is a kind of maintenance that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to pay for a new pump, uh, do some uh, uh, changes over at that pump house. This is a, this is a, a requirement for us to maintain the system. This, this pay for the salaries of the, of the water works employees, people that, that service that. Uh, our cost to produce water doesn't go backwards. It always, you know, it, 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 it keeps pace with the with the typically with the cost of living. But in this case, recently, all parts, all, all, all of our supply channels are more fragile and, and in some cases more expensive. So uh, Mr. Haney and, and our uh, waterworks folks, this includes solid wastes as well as sewer. So I'm gonna try to cover all those spots right now. Uh, Everything is uh, costing a little more and this comprehensive plan, uh, is, which we cleaves up, cleave unto uh, is is a, a prudent way to anticipate and be prepared for the improvements that we have planned, as well as the the unpredictable things like losing a pump uh, yesterday uh, and, and allowing us to be able to fix those things uh, without having to come back and ask for large amounts of money uh, in uh, without predictability. Can I ask when this plan was, uh, this assessment of the 3% for, for uh, 2021 was, uh, was revised or assessed, or we just, like, like was noted by Dale, uh, we just assessed or take a look at that plan and just went for it. Joe, if you're there, can you remember when we adopted our last comprehensive plan? Was it three years ago or two? Well, and since you're waiting for Joe, I'm gonna interject from my recollection is that uh, a 3% increase has been fairly standard, I believe. Uh, I can remember in the years I've been here, there was actually one year where we did have to implement a 30% increase as I recall in water. Um. Council members, I, I was just kind of looking back through some of the water efficiency goals. So the last water system plan um, was probably adopted closer to 2016 or 15 or earlier um, because we started our, our, our new water system plan um, in 2019. So we try this to adopt every six years a new plan. And in that... So I think Joe, Joe's got cut out there. What I think that is plan to... is a list of all the projects that we have.
So yeah, so the, 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 your, your water system plan, your, your uh, sewer comprehensive plan, I think what Joe is trying to tell you is that in those plans, there is a list of all the different system improvements and or plant improvements, um, you know, pumping capacity improvements, and with a projected cost to maintain those as well as to, to uh, put in uh, new, new systems, you know, if, if we're growing or things like that. And then there's also projected rates in there that are designed to keep enough uh, money flowing into the, uh, the, uh, the sewer funds and the water funds to you know, not only maintain, but then to meet the demand if we have a large system improvement that's scheduled, like a building of a new plant or a new well or something like that, then we would go and build into there the financing in that document for how we're going to go after that large dollar amount. So just like with the uh, sewer system improvements that you just heard the public hearing on, um, that we, we would do something similar in the water system plan where we say, okay, fine, we're going to go and commit so much general of the general fund or excuse me, the uh, water system funds to go towards requiring financing for that larger project or that larger maintenance project, whatever it happens to be. But that's all detailed in that, in that uh, um, six year plan. I hope that answers the question. It, it does answer some of it. Uh, uh, my, one of my concerns is uh, it's actually two, a two-sided concern. One of the concerns is uh, how, if it's been adopted every six years, um, you know, how has it adjusted with COVID? Uh, if our, you know, our costs have gone up, uh, you know, is it taking into that consideration that those increase in costs? On the flip side, uh, how has it affected the, how will it affect our taxpayers who are dealing with COVID, who are dealing with uh, uh, business shutdowns, and is it, um, is it prudent to uh, give an increase in a, in a year like this year, um, and, and uh, or maybe we can afford to tighten it up a little bit and uh, save some taxpayer dollars. I'm, I'm, I'm extra sensitive about giving tax increases in in 2020 uh, for 2021 based on uh, the the COVID issues we've seen. With regard to your first question, I don't believe it 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 takes that into account. I mean, that's we we adopt in a cycle per per state requirements and everything, and we're required to project out um, to build those improvements. So you know, external things like COVID or or other things or, or natural disasters, even for that matter aren't really considered in here. It's strictly a financial um, uh, calculation, I guess. Um, but with regard to the second part of your question or statement, um, it would have um, a, a, a detrimental effect because the just like when we, I think it was like two or three years ago, we considered a changes in the sewer rates and connection fees. So if you go and you say, I'm only going to adopt a 2% increase when uh, say a, a three or a 4% is proposed, then when you get to year end, when your project is, is ready to be due and you're ready to go out for that special financing through USDA or some other funding mechanism um, for, for water, it's ecology or maybe Department of Health, but then you're not going to have the, the money in the funds to go and, and get your local match to go for that grant money. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like robbing Peter to pay Paul a little bit. I, I would also add that the reality uh, that our residents face with regard to utility rates is that they're, they're going to see far less on their utility uh, uh, bills because We've, we've moved, as you know, uh, uh, due to uh, previous council eight years ago, sunsetting, requiring a sunset of our utility tax uh, on the Maruto debt, going from 29% back down to, uh, I believe, uh, 14%. So what we're looking at is a net drop of, say, at your average $100 utility bill uh, of $15 versus a 3% raise. Uh, so we're having a net 
drop, a, a big drop uh, in, in our uh, utility costs to all of our customers across the board. So while on the one hand, uh, we are asking for a bit more 3% for both all, all, all three solid waste, sewer and water, uh, we're also giving back uh, quite a bit uh, as a result of the sunset of the Maruto debt uh, set forth by a previous council. Uh, Jackie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, do we anticipate any of the projects that we have planned for our water services to be affected to in regards to COVID? Will, will we be implementing all of the plans or not? Yes, we will, we will move forward with all projects, planned projects. We don't have any, any uh, uh, plans to, to pull in uh, and, and postpone anything. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll move forward. Yes. Jackie? I have a continuation question to that. So in regards to availability of product, do we anticipate those products to be higher priced now that there may be um, shortages of product? I would, I would really like Joe to answer that because he's, he's uh, closer to that. But unless he can't answer it, I, I'm going to say we should expect that uh, in any case. But if Joe can get through, I'd appreciate it. Well, I didn't hear all the questions, but it's something about products. Are they being delayed, you mean? Mm -hmm. And more expensive, Joe. We haven't seen an increase, but we've seen a lot of delays. It's the reason why Well 7 isn't back online right now. We're waiting for a, 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 a back check valve to be installed. And we have no idea when it's going to show up. Jackie, did that answer your question? Uh, for the most part. So my very last question on this is we had a, um, a project last council meeting that we had to approve of additional funds for HLA because of delay of pro projects. Are we... Uh, um, taking that into consideration that we maybe extend our contracts a little bit longer uh, to account for delays in regards to COVID? Or are we uh, in a certain time frame that we have to do projects and then request additional funds for uh, delay of project? Unfortunately, it was easy. So, Jackie, uh, I'm good sorry. Lander. There was delays, then the main contractor couldn't present. Yeah. So, uh, so I think what Joe was trying to tell you, council members, was that we, we did, with those that good lander contract, there was a delay with the main contractor on that and his performance. And so, you know, with regard to the new contracts, we have to we do have to kind of conform to what the timeframes are for the different loan documents and things like that and approvals through whatever agency is overseeing that, whether it's DOT, like in the case of a road project or uh, Department of Ecology and, and uh, Department of Health, if, if it's water. Um, you know, if, if the, certainly if the contractor has early on it has identified that there might be delays or whatever. We tried to build that into the schedule as best we can, but unfortunately we just don't, we don't have a crystal ball for all of it. So. Jackie, did that answer your question? Okay, thanks. Um, Mr. Carlson. Uh, just to piggyback on one of Jackie's questions about uh, projects being completed in 2021 and expectations. Were there any projects that were not completed besides this one, uh, Well 7, that uh, weren't completed in 2020 because of COVID issues? I don't believe so, but uh, if I'm wrong, Joe, please uh, jump in and say yes or no. I didn't hear enough of that. Jeff, why don't you try calling me on your desk phone and put your speaker on? I'll see if I can follow it that way. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, I think I can speak to that. We, we have no other projects beyond the Well 7 project that uh, is a carryover that we expect any additional costs on or time. Madam Mayor, I think we have to try to move on here. Okay. I'm on speaker phone so I can try to follow and answer. All right, thanks, Joe. Okay, so Council, do we have a motion to approve this resolution? Ms. Kevin, I move to approve the resolution revising the rates for uh, 2021 water utility service. Thank you. And do we have a second? A second. So we have a motion to approve from Kevin, a second from Jackie. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilwoman Matson? Yes. Councilwoman Vargas? Yeah, I just wonder why I can't hear it on your speaker. No. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? Yes. Councilman Carlson? No. Madam Mayor, motion passes with five yes and two no. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Novobelsky, in three. Yes, I'm still here. Okay. So, uh, N3 is a resolution to establish the 2021 sewer utility service rates. And uh, this service also, uh, during our budget discussions, Public Works directed me to build into the financial schedule, the estimates, a 3% rate increase for a single family residence that will result in an increase of $1.38 per month. And uh, for a senior low income, 83 cents per month. And then there's uh, other types of customers that are discussed in the AIS. I would welcome any questions. Suzanne. Thank you. I, I know in some of the other ones we've we've mentioned the the um, sewer reserve fund being used for things like the wastewater collection improvements. Do we have a sense of how much of this 3% increase would be going towards savings for that versus how much is needed just to cover cover the costs? Okay, Madam Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, as uh, my old economics professor, Dr. Noonan, used to say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, we're, we're, we have to uh, prepare for eventualities, our future projects, pay for up, upkeep and maintenance, and uh, pay for uh, ongoing projects. So what this, what this ad additional funding uh, uh, provides for is that uh, increase the uh, average increase in costs of, of parts and labor. Remember, you're going to be voting on uh, a 2% across the board increase in labor. So we have to keep up with that increase in order to uh, provide the services at the excellent levels that our residents currently receive. So that that uh, is the impetus behind this 3% request, as well as for solid waste. Uh, council members, I would just add to what Mr. Wayman said is we do we do generally know how much it's split out. It's it's more detailed out in the budget and in self uh, how much the 2% equates to over the course of the year. Um, but you'd have to look in specifically under the sewer uh, reserve fund and see how much um, it's going to go up in 2021 by year end. I think Joe just told me is somewhere in the neck of the woods for sewer, sewer reserve it's around, I think he said $50,000. Um, but then also that, that two, excuse me, 3% is kind of broken up into also operating fund, like Mr. Wayman said, as well as um, uh, capital improvements. Well, it pays for that loan as well. 
could you all hear Joe there? Okay. Okay. Well, and and then I'm looking at the detailed budget for the uh, sewer fund, and uh, the three percent amounts to sixty thousand dollars increase in revenues, and uh, in Joe's transfers to the sewer reserve fund. Last year, for, well, for the current year, he transferred one hundred and twenty-five thousand. For next year, he has asked for one hundred and thirty-one thousand to be set aside to be moved over from the sewer fund into the reserve to help fund future improvement projects. Jackie. Will our payments for that loan come from those reserves? And um, if so, can we uh, know an anticipated yearly payment? Does that is that amortized out already? Take the loan application. They're going to review our our ability to pay it back and whether we're destitute or not, and then they'll either vary the loan from 1.75 to 2.75, and they'll give us a loan repayment schedule. Now, I, I believe once that comes back in, we can turn it down if we don't want it, if we think we can't afford it, but we have got everything set up. We should be able to afford about $150,000 a month or a year payment plus interest. And so Joe, she was asking also, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jackie, is, is that that payment does that come out of the uh the money from that that three percent either out of operating well, cost or, or just the three percent just goes into the operating fund and that just keeps the fund another like dale said 60 some thousand well there's a there's a the loan repayment and you know all the other stuff that's just all part of it it's just just like getting a, a raise in your paycheck every year you can now afford to to, to operate and it'll allow you also to, I don't know, go buy a new car or something if you want to. And that's basically what we're doing. We're buying new equipment, we're putting in a new water uh, sewer line system. All it does is just keeps adding to the operating fund. Jackie, your hands up again. If we have a certain amount in the reserve funds for our sewers, are we able to get a lower rate on that um, loan that we're requesting, Joe? They, don't, they, they look at how much money we have in reserve fund. They look to see how if we have any uh, 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 low income housing areas. They look at all that and they ask how much uh, infrastructure we own what other payments we, we are making to other agencies for loans. And then they'll go in there and determine our loan worthiness. And then they'll make us an offer. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions, council? Um, do we have a motion to approve the resolution? I move to approve the resolution revising rates for 2021 sewer utility services. Thank you, Jackie. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Jackie, a second by Cliff. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilman Matson? Yes. Councilman Vargas? No. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? Yes. Councilman Carlson? Nope. Madam Mayor, five to two. Thank you. Resolution in four, Mr. Novobelsky. Uh, yes, uh, N4 is a resolution to establish the 2021 solid waste or garbage, you might call it, utility service rates. And uh, as you may recall from our budget meetings, we were uh, provided a letter from Basin Disposal, our contract garbage provider, 
uh, as to the uh, contractual allowance for the consumer price index increase, which I believe was two point some percent. Plus, they pointed out that the uh, Yakima County landfill tipping fees were increasing in costs, which they're allowed to pass on to us. So for the current year estimate, I built in a 3% rate increase. And uh, that's what you have before you on a 90 gallon, which is a typical uh, residential service that would amount to 50 cents per month. For a low income senior, if they had a 60 gallon service, it would be a 35 cent increase per month. And then there's other types of services that are discussed within the AIS there. And uh, as it turned out, I, I believe even with a 3% that uh, the current budget is projected to end the year with less money than it begins, meaning that the expenditures are still going to exceed the, the revenues, but you know nothing significant, I'll say. So that's why I felt 3% was a uh, was a reasonable and necessary rate increase. Thank you, Dale. Russ? Dale, you answered my question mostly there, uh, but uh, just to clarify, uh, are we doing a dollar for dollar uh, increase with uh, uh, Columbia Basin or, or is, there, uh, is there some additional costs out of our own pockets for this, or is this all contracted and we're, we're subject to their increases? Well, uh, we're subject to their increases. And then even within our organization, you know, uh, we have myself and front staff, uh, which provide support uh, for the administration, for the billing and collection. And uh, hopefully uh, I'm gonna receive a 2% at least rate increase per the uh, currently uh, planned increases. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Council? Do we have a motion? Roger? I move to approve. I'll second it. It's been moved by Roger to approve, seconded by Russ. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilman Madsen? Yes. Councilwoman Vargas? Yes. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? Yes. Councilman Carlson? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in five, Mr. Henney or Mr. Peters, whoever we can hear from. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, part of the water, okay, right now we're working on the uh, a new water system plan. We've reached the end of the life of the current one. And part of this is to adopt the city has to adopt the what they call a water use efficiency goals. And in those, in there is where we try to obviously reduce our consumption of groundwater by getting the residents to utilize less water. And so if you look at the page two of the, or look at the resolution of the AIS, we are trying to project a 2% reduction over the next 10 years of average residential consumption. And we wanna do that through these six measures. It is a new service, well, it's a service connection charge. Currently we charge um, businesses and, and warehouses and residentials and taverns and offices, all different rates based on their history of, of water consumption. And so, we're going to look at that uh, uh, rate and and revise it. The water bill notification 
one of the projects, or the, our, I think our first project in the new uh, water system plan is to install automatic meter reading. And what that does, these radio transmitted uh, 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 radio uh, reads, water reads, will um, be part of a, a, a system that the customers can go online and connect to. They can see their um, water consumption during the month and they can make adjustments accordingly if they need to. And we want to try to include some of that information on, on a water bill. The Heritage Garden demonstration, that's a project that Ecology has some funding for, and that will allow education on landscape and either reducing existing yards and maybe going with some other kind of uh, uh, vegetation that will uh, please the, the the owner, but yet require less water. A customer leak detection system. Uh, what we want to do there is we want to be able to get a little more proactive and have uh, uh, when people have uh, uh, leaks, we can go um, and provide them information is probably as where the leak is or maybe we can trace it their water line to their house a lot of people don't know where their lines are at so it's just to to help customers with leak detection um and then we just we already have this one on our web page but we're just including it in there as a water use efficiency program that's on our web page currently and we will be coming back to council with this once we get a handle on where we want to go but I think we're going to be looking to go to a a, 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 a stru rate structure that is a block rate that kind of like you see on your power bill. You've got a base amount of water, and we do this now, but we basically, the more water you use, the cheaper it is. And we're going to have to reverse that, and the more water you use, the more it's going to cost you. And so we want to go through and reevaluate our water rate structure. So we want to include that 2% statement and those six measures in this new water system plan. And we've got to have that. We're required to do this separately for some reason, but that's how it is. They want a separate hearing and a separate uh, resolution passed by council. And the council approves this resolution. We'll include a copy of it mm. with our draft submittal in February of our water system plan to the Department of Health for them to conduct their last review. Everybody hear that? Yep. So Jackie is uh, raising her hands, it looks yeah. like. Jackie. Hi, Joe. I was wondering if uh, I have two questions. One, do we know when our new service connection, uh, the electronic meters are slated to start being installed? Um. You know, we're showing it as the 2021, perhaps the 2022. Maybe we'll get all the plan specs and estimate together and, and the drawings and whatnot, and we'll go off the bid. But I don't know if it's too late in the year, then we'll just wait and, 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 and we'll set it up for a, a 2022 construction start. Thank you. And then my second one is the water bill notification, kind of like Yakima's eye on water. Yeah, they've got uh, uh, a similar system. It's all called AMI, and it's just automatic meter reading and, 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 and uh, intelligence. It, it gives you, uh, it transmits all your data to a central computer that will want to install at City Hall that will download everybody's uh, consumption for the month, and then it'll go through a, this, a process similar to what we're doing now. Is just now we're manually reading each meter, and then we're giving them into Duran, and she takes and downloads all those uh, handheld uh, data units, and then she produces bills for everybody. Jackie. Sorry, I know I'm full of questions tonight. Um, so Yakima's Eye on Water, the residents are able to pop onto their onto this website and look at their usage every single day, and that helps them uh, look 
uh, identify leaks. Is is that what we're talking about for the water bill notification, or is that something that different, like the customer uh, leak detection? No, we haven't even had approval yet to move forward with this project. So really, we've looked at some different. You know, I mean, there's like a probably dozen or two of uh, uh, purveyors out there that you know have different type of systems and battery life in their products and whatnot and somebody you can you can just replace the head like on our existing meters and some on old new meters so we just really have done some very preliminary evaluations of the different systems but overall yeah the, the customer would like to see them be able to log on look at their consumption for the month and like i said then they can make adjustments uh cliff you have a question well, for, first, I just want to make sure that I have clarification that what we're doing today is just setting the goals that will be part of the water plan that's coming in a couple of months that will put some meat on this. That's correct. We will, yeah, right. We want to put those in there, put them into the draft, send it to the Department of Health. They have then up to 90 days to review and send it back and then we will go and come back to council. Well, and before that, I'm going to give you guys a draft copy of the plan to review for quite some time. And then when that comes back from the Department of Health, then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we can have a study session again, if you want, or however you want to handle it. But uh, I plan at least one study session and well, then we'll make an adoption request. Part of my question is what customer leak detection looks like. I mean, you mentioned that help find lines between the meter and the house and things like that. You're, we're not looking at going through and helping them find a leaky faucet or not. What, what exactly do you foresee in the customer leak detection? Well, well yeah, that's part of it. Like I say, if they got a leak and first thing usually we ask is if they've got a, a faucet that drips or a toilet that runs or uh, anything like that. Any, uh, and if they say no, then we suspect that it's probably in the service lines because we service lines in, well, not in the older part of town, they you know could be 50, 60 years old and they're galvanized. And we have an electrolysis problem in town in certain areas and they eat those pipes up and then they, they'll leak. So, but, like I say, a lot of them don't even know where their lines are at. And so we will try to help them by uh, uh, tracing their service line. And um, we've got some probes we can stick in the ground to try to see if it's abnormally wet. There's just different things we can do to try to figure that out. But that's just, like I say, a program we want to do to try to reduce water consumption. Thank you. You're welcome. Madam Mayor, I recommend we uh, adopt the company resolution. I'll second. Great. We have a motion to adopt the resolution from Kevin, a second by Cliff. Roll call, Monica. Council Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilwoman Madsen? Yes. Councilwoman Vargas? Yes. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? Yes. Councilman Carlson? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Henney, N6. Okay, item N6 is the resolution um, for the city of Sealand that authorizes the mayor to sign an application for federal assistance to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And that total application will be for $2,036,290. And um, like I say, we'll put the application together, we'll send it off, and we'll see how they're going to rank us as far as the uh, interest goes. And yeah, if, if they send it back, as far as I know, we can we can say, no, nah, we just, I guess we can't afford it. But, but I don't hope that we won't go that route because this needs to be done because this project will alleviate a lot of bottle points and will create uh, increased capacity for areas in development because right now 
right now these areas like up Crusher Canyon, up Fremont, are all, and even some of it coming down from uh, uh, Valhalla area, off of West Goodlander, those come down and get into the city and they hit these, these choke points. And so there's going to be a time if we don't get some of these choke points eliminated that we're going to have to restrict development in those basins. Like I say, one is Crusher, one's, one's up Fremont, and one's up Spires, and one's up West Goodlander, and the other one. But this project is going to help our other basins, the Southern Avenue. So, what I'd like to see is the resolution approved so we can make the, the, the application and uh, just keep pursuing this and see where, where we go. Roger. I move to approve. A second. We have a motion to approve by Roger, a second by Jackie. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen. Yes. Councilman Matson. Yes. Councilman Vargas. Yes. Councilman Peterson. Yes. Councilman Bell. Yes. Councilman Costello. Yes. Councilman Carlson. Yes. Unanimous, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Right. Um, ordinances, Mr. Peters. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is 01, and this is the ordinance amending the city of Sela's Title 11, which is our municipal code with regard to building codes and its adoption of, of, of all of the international building codes and the Washington State Amendments. Um, our recommendation is that the council uh, approve the ordinance. And Mayor, I move to approve the ordinance. Thank you, Kevin. Mike? A second. We have a motion to approve by Kevin, a second by Mike. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilwoman Matson? Yes. Councilwoman Vargas? Yes. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? Yes. Councilman Carlson? Yes. Unanimous, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay, 03, Mr. Novavelsky. 02, Madam Mayor, we flipped them at the beginning. Oh, we flipped them, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, 02. Dale, are you there? Yeah, it always helps when you unmute yourself. Yeah. So what we have uh, before you is an ordinance to establish the 2021 base salaries and wage schedule for our management confidential and unrepresented employees. And I, I know there's been uh, a lot of uh, discussion here as of recent, uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Wayman would like to speak. Thanks, Dale. So uh, hopefully all of our council members got a uh, updated uh, copy of the chart we set up for uh, pay scales on 12.8. Uh, if you could refer to that, uh, please. Uh, some of the, first, before I start into this, I wanna thank the five council members that worked with us so over the Thanksgiving holiday to uh, work on these uh, uh, changes that we, we submitted uh, for your uh, consideration today. Uh, we were listening to you during our hearing uh, at, at your concerns, and uh, we worked with the, the five of you to, to uh, uh, come up with a, a more uh, acceptable uh, 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 set of proposals. So uh, I'll go through the, the changes uh, as they, as they um, were uh, negotiated over the holidays. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll just, I'll, what I'll do is I'll highlight the individuals that are receiving a clear raise above and beyond the 2%. Uh, that would be our, uh, starting at the top, our utility billing specialist, uh, $300 in addition to the 2%. Our accounts payable payroll individual, you'll see on the monthly wage how it's split 
from uh, a, a raise uh, to 4,149 on the 1st, and then it jumps to 4,449 on the 5th. And that would be because that employee uh, is uh, uh, going through a probation period and they'll complete that probation in May. Our court clerk, $300 per month above and beyond 2%. Our public works uh, uh, department assistant that's changing our original request was for an additional, additional $631. We've moved that after discussing this with our council members to $300. Our fire chief, our initial request was $598. It has moved to 150. The same applies to our public works director. Uh, and uh, the same will also apply to our clerk treasurer. Uh, the mayor and I, uh, after discussions uh, we, and with some of the, uh, these council members, our five, we, uh, while we still want to continue to have parity with our department heads uh, to include our police chief, uh, we, uh, elected to approach this in a more incremental way. Uh, so we're asking for one fourth of what we were asking for originally in order to close that gap. Our public works utility supervisor, uh, we originally requested $225 additional per month and we're moving that request to 150. So we've lowered that. Our executive assistant, uh, we are asking for an additional 300. It's the same as it was before. Our clerk treasurer, as I said, uh, is at 150. And uh, this is a change from our discussions earlier with uh, uh, our council members. Uh, this is for um, our planning and building permit specialist. Uh, some uh, additional factors were brought into the uh, our, our to, brought to our attention, and we originally had a fifty dollar raise uh, scheduled for this individual, but after we uh, reviewed her her case and her situation, her seniority, as well as her training and uh, her certifications, we believe she rates a, an additional three hundred dollar raise. So to sum up, these three hundred dollar raises these are non represented administrative clerical help um, uh, that we have. These are, these are not just uh, clerks, these are specialists with certifications and skill sets that are, are, are valuable to the city. And uh, what we've seen is, is uh, them not really keeping up with what uh, their competitors uh, have in other cities or, or, or people who do the same types of jobs in other cities. Uh, and and uh, it's not quite as simple as uh, measuring uh, a, a city of equal size uh, to the city of Sela, we also need to, or, or a greater size. Many of these other cities of greater size have multiple employees doing the same task. Right now, we're just, we have 58 people, uh, one deep in each position, and in many cases, they have to be even more skilled than, than employees at larger cities with much larger paychecks. So that summarizes uh, the changes uh, that we have uh, since our last meeting. Um, and uh, I believe I have nothing else uh, other than to answer your questions. Um, Mike. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, going through those numbers, um, yeah, my, as I stated uh, during those me that meeting, that uh, my wish would be that we do it mid-year based off of the current situation with COVID um, in hopes that uh, the, the uh, vaccinations and other things uh, start at least by mid-year from what it's projected um, so that uh, we're not doing it right in the middle. I think it's bad timing if we started it in January. Thank I you, would Mike. add that, that all of the pers all 58 individuals that work for the city are considered essential personnel. And I, I believe I've, I forwarded uh, a message to all of uh, our employees, as well as the council members, 
explaining that they are essential and that uh, uh, they would have to have specific requirements uh, in order to call in sick. So they're, you know, they're working through this. They're, they're essential. And uh, ask, I, I respectfully disagree. I, I think that especially during this time, uh, we should be thinking about uh, offering them these raises because they are doing that essential work uh, during a tough time. So I, I, I guess I, I would respectfully disagree with that. Mr. Carlson. Um, being, I, I have a challenge with that term essential. I, I do think we are all essential. Um, we all have we all have tasks that are essential, and I realize that that uh, our governor has has deemed some essential and some not. But but uh, I feel like we've continued to do our jobs, uh, and our staff has continued to do their jobs just as they would have before. And so I don't know that that considers a, a higher level of of pay. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I'm I'm very hesitant to give pay increases when we have businesses struggling. Um, and I'm, I'm also very hesitant to give equal pay increases to people just because they're department heads or just because uh, they're, you know, want to keep everyone equal. Um, different department heads have different responsibilities and, and oversee different people. Um, I, I respect our department heads. I respect all of our employees. I have good relationships with, with many of them. And I, I don't want to take money away, but... But at the same time, um, there's a, uh, for example, uh, there's a different uh, job responsibility on, on a fire chief versus a, a you know, clerk versus a, a public works. I mean, there's different people to oversee. So I, the, the justification to me that they deserve a raise to be all be equal. Uh, and, and although we've changed that, um, dropped that down, I still don't, I still don't see that justification. Uh, and and I have a I have challenges given the times that we're in where people are struggling, uh, as we're increasing taxes, uh, which I don't agree with. Uh, I would say the way to keep our costs down to keep taxes down is to keep our labor rates down. So my recommendation would be no no increases above cost of living, uh, at least. Uh, um, I I would have said for all year, but I I think Mike has a point maybe. Uh, bring it back mid-year to discuss and and reassess how we are at that point. Thank you. Um, Cliff, you have your hand up. I've gone back and forth on these. I'm, um, and, and I appreciate the fact that that you've listened to us and, and not had the um, increase is as large as they were, but they all still seem kind of arbitrary. And one of the things that I asked for and haven't seen yet is a comparison. And I realized that, that comparing uh, the needs of SELA to Toppenish or Prosser or other similar cities because you go from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and people that have the same title may not necessarily have the same responsibility. But um, I, I appreciate the work that our employees do and and do want to give them a competitive salary and everything, but but I'm still not really sure that these numbers are. I, I see where they're equalizing with each other, but I don't. I still haven't seen anything that says that that's comparable to what they would get elsewhere. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, Suzanne, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, 
I have similar concerns with dramatic pay increases without seeing comparisons from cities that are comparable in our size, location, and budget. Um, I have two concerns with the attorney position, mostly based on the fact that in just 2019, the council rejected a contract for $132,000 for an in-house full-time attorney with considerable municipal experience. I think 20 plus years, if I'm recalling that correctly. Um, in that meeting, it was also discussed that the 132,000 was too much money, according or some people believed it to be, and also would have placed it as one of the highest paid attorneys in our area for a city our size. So I'm, I'm confused what, what could change over the course of a year, because now just a year later, we're being asked to consider $160,000 rates comparables to cities two to 10 to significantly larger sizes. And it's also a rate $28,000 higher than we just rejected last year. It's really a rate that's so high that it's, it's astonishing to me, really. And I think in this year, really every year, taxpayers depend on us to be good stewards of the tax dollars. And this year, more than ever, with so many people suffering, businesses closing, people struggling to meet end, ends meet, um, it'd be really concerning to me for these sort of dramatic increases and why I really admire and I appreciate the work of so many of our city employees. I think we're so lucky to have the good group that we that we do. Um, I, I want to retain them, but I don't believe in significant increases just, just to match salaries or say for somebody who's only been here for, you know, just a month or offering a significant increase in wage without posting posting it for a competitive post. And ultimately, you know, like I said, $28,000 higher than we just saw last year. Um, I just, like I said, I think the biggest, our biggest responsibility is being good stewards of the tax dollars. And I don't think we'd be doing that by passing this as written. Okay, Madam Mayor, I, I think I can tackle some of this. Uh, uh, first off, uh, um, I was here last year when we were contemplating uh, 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 offering a full-time job to Mr. No, um, and you weren't. So I'll, I'll try to fill you in on some of the blanks. Uh, Mr. No uh, was very, very happy working here, and he was offering us reduced uh, uh, paid de demands in order to stay here. He'd been here for many years. He was quite comfortable. Now we're in a different set of circumstances. We're asking uh, for a, a, a an individual who's willing to come here without legal support uh, in order to uh, adequately uh, handle our civil affairs. Now, you mentioned bigger cities, more pay. Well, let's let's talk about Yakima, our next door neighbor. Uh, their top attorney makes one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, a little more than that, and has a staff of attorneys, a let, a ten additional attorneys beside himself, also a staff of seven clerks to support their requirements. Um, now, what we're proposing, and they have lots of different disparate uh, departments that uh, many of these uh, attorneys uh, handle, as well as some criminal uh, uh, cases. Uh, but we're asking one attorney to handle all of our requirements with no legal support. Um, finding a bargain basement attorney who's willing to come in at 132,000, 140,000 is not going to bring us the quality type attorney that we expect and need in SELA. So what we're asking for here with $160,000 would bring us a competitive attorney with the appropriate level of experience, uh, at least 10 years of litigation, uh, labor law knowledge, as, as well as land use and other things that are applicable uh, uh, to city operations and city needs. Now. Uh, with regard to uh, responsible management of the budget, let me let me uh, run some numbers by you since you haven't been here as long as I have. In 2016, this is just our general fund, okay, not not the full fund. We we rolled over two hundred ninety six thousand dollars. In 2017, we rolled over three hundred twelve thousand dollars. In 2018, we rolled over $621,000. In 2019, we all rolled over $697,000. In 2020, we rolled over $749,000. And we're projecting 
in 2021 with this budget, which you're considering, $843,000. Now, just with the general fund, that would indicate your staff, your mayor, have been more than responsible. In fact, uh, uh, quite vigilant with regard to the taxpayers' funds. We are every day, those department heads which you have an objection to giving raises to, they're the ones that are working every day to cut costs, to present viable opportunities, viable options for us to go forward without spending more money. Let me give you an example. Over at the Civic Center, we had the big C on center broken, okay? And it, and it needed to be re replaced. Well, some folks down at the Public Works Department figured out a way to fabricate the C and we saved about $7,000 with about a hundred dollars worth of work. That's just a, an example of the kinds of things your staff do to save that money going forward into the future. Uh, let me go further. Let me go further. Six years ago, when I arrived here, our uh, ending net cash and invest investments was $6.3 million. Six years later, just six short years later, our ending net cash and investments is $13.65 million. We've more than doubled. That is responsible stewardship of taxpayer money. Now, what we're presenting to you is a sustainable and fair approach to our employees. They're doing the hard work during COVID. They are, uh, they're, they're, they're competitive. And here, we're not talking about waitresses or, or hairdressers or barbers, who, and those people are suffering, uh, bartenders, but we're talking about skilled individuals who are providing necessary support to keep the community running on a day in, day out basis. And uh, for us to, 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 to look at them and say, hey, you know, you just got to wait six months or maybe even not get this just because of COVID. I don't think that's fair. And I don't want to look them in the eye and tell them that the, you know, I, I would hate to look them in the eye and tell them that the council thought that it just, just wasn't the time. The, the city uh, more, can more than afford this, but moreover, the city needs to consider the, the cost that we might incur by losing these people because it is a competitive environment for municipal employees that are skilled. Okay, They have places to go. I, I had a, a discussion with one of our employees today who is asking for a raise, and, and, and this is one of the, the individuals who's, who's being considered here, and by, by goodness, that person deserves it, and she, she, he or she may move to another position if, if required. So I want you to consider that. Please consider what the options are that our employees have and how they're gonna, how they're gonna take this if the council says, no, not now, maybe later, or maybe not at all. Um, unless I got any more questions, that's all I have. Um, Ross, you've had your hand up for a few minutes. Yeah, um, you know, I appreciate the, like I said before, I appreciate the staff. Uh, I don't appreciate uh, uh, the attitude Mr. Wayman has taken with the council uh, and, and the comments about uh, who's been here longer. Uh, that's not, uh, that's not key here. Um, I, I am concerned with the, the dramatic increases. Um, we have longevity pay to take care of those who have been here longer. People have come here because we are competitive. Uh, I, like Cliff said, I have not seen comparables to, to work from. It does seem arbitrary. Um, there's, there's ways to have increased time with an attorney uh, without making this dramatic jump. I'm concerned that we are uh, trying to put in a full-time city attorney to be the highest paid uh, attorney or highest paid position in the city of Stila, yet this is not going out to bid for, to allow anybody to uh, apply or put in for this. Uh, you can create a uh, offer uh, an opportunity for a higher paid uh, contract wage on a year to year basis instead of making a long-term full-time employee and allowing that, that uh, attorney to 
manage their time appro uh, appropriately to to bring in other uh, continually work with their other clients. So I don't see uh, I'm definitely not in favor of a full-time city attorney. I've still heard nothing about human resources on our, our solution there that is, is acceptable in my eyes. Um, and uh, we've got a proposal in here for a, uh, and I love Chief Hanna, but we've got a proposal in here for our police, or a fire chief who is going to be retiring in three months. Uh, I don't understand the justification for that. Uh, why, why he needs an increased pay for three months. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. These numbers sound arbitrary. Um, I've, I've la asked last year for a uh, city administrator to be included on this, on this uh, uh, ordinance showing uh, that, that wage, it's not there. Uh, it was requested last year and, and nothing happened and it's not there again this year. And I don't understand why that is not pertinent to this report. Hey, that Jack, would the answer to that uh, to that comment is that the city employee the city administrator is a contract employee that's created by code uh, and not uh, an employee uh, who is not on in the in the municipal code. So uh, my particular position is fully public. Anybody can can look it up and they can see uh, what my pay is. Uh, it just does not fall on this on the ordinance. Yeah, I would disagree with that. We do have other another contract employee whose whose contract does show up on this ordinance. Uh, I think for transparency purposes, I think it's prudent to have that and show that um, you are a W two employee, uh, just like everybody else. You do have a contract, and I get that, but you are an employee, so you should be uh, represented on this report, in my opinion. All right, thank you, Russ. Um, Jackie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first off, I would like to thank every um, employee of the city. I know everybody works very hard. Everybody has worked very hard through COVID, um, but it is, it is our responsibility to look at these very carefully. It may be a little frustrating to people, but that is what our job is to do, is to review these. And um, I will reiterate a comment that I did make in regards to the department heads. And again, they're doing a wonderful job, but to, to add an additional position adjustment to bring somebody up, even if it's a quarter of the way up to a, a, an employee that was just negotiated a contract with, I don't think that um, is a position that we should take. I don't disagree with the 2% increase at all that, um, the staff is it is recommending um, because you know every the prices go up, food goes up, gas goes up, property taxes, etc. Insurance goes up. I understand that, but doing the position adjustments, especially for the three department heads or and the fourth um, uh, uh, street in, in the streets and uh, public works, um, I. I would have to disagree with that, respectfully disagree um, with that. Again, nothing at all against our department heads, but this, um, to bring it up to a rate of just a negotiated um, contract, I don't agree with. Um, I would agree with um, possibly looking at the, um, the specialist, the, the billing specialist and the administrative staff um, with the understanding that they had a leg behind in their increases, but maybe taking a, a step approach with those um, position adjustments, exactly like um, Mr. Costello had mentioned that maybe we could take a, 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 a six month look at, and maybe do a half and take another look at in six months in regards to just the position adjustments. Thank you. So if I could read back what I understand from this, Jackie, uh, was what you're proposing is cutting out entirely the uh, $150 per month raise for Henny, Hannah, and Novobelsky, and holding in abeyance uh, all other raises until a later date? Maybe I misread you. No, you, you, that, that is a misunderstanding, uh, Don. Um, what I'm saying are the three department heads and uh, Mr. Jones, um, Ty, those for adjustments for $150. And I'm not saying that 
I'm not saying that the 2% increase should not be given. I'm just saying that the position adjustments for the administrative staff, we could look at a stepped program. Um, maybe cut it, uh, do that. For example, our utility billing specialists, instead of the 300 in January, go with 150 and then relook at it in six months to see where we are. Again, um, with the understanding that their rates maybe have not been adjusted accordingly to um, what market rates may be. Is that clearer? Sort of. Um, sort of. Okay, I'll make it really, really clear. Cut out okay. the four um, position adjustments completely. For the uh, utility billing specialist, we use her, in the, uh, her as an example. The $300 position adjustment, cut that in half, relook at the other second half in June. So if I could read that, the, the, uh, we have uh, exactly six uh, uh, raises for our, and I'll go through those real quick so we're all real clear. Our utility billing specialist, our accounts payable payroll, our court clerk, our public works department assistant, our executive assistant, and our planning and building permit specialist. So you're, you're, they're, they're all proposed at a $300 per month raise. You're proposing to pair them back to 150 and you're proposing to eliminate the proposed request for 150 for Jones, Haney, Hannah, and Novobelsky? Yes, that's my, my proposal. Thank you, Jackie. Um, do we have any other council members that want to speak before Russ? Okay, Russ, you're up. I, I totally respect that. I've talked plenty. I appreciate that. Um, I would, I would uh, like to have some discussion about our payroll and accounts payable specialist who has been hired a month and a half ago. Um, I, I don't know as though that position would deserve a raise uh, as they came over because of our pay. Um, so my, I, I would be uh, like to have that discussion. Also like to have the discussion uh, of our public records specialist who um, I, I realize it's a different scenario, but it was a transition over from another department, but it came from being a department head over Parks and Rec uh, uh, being paid the same rate over to be you a know, public records specialist, whereas pr our previous uh, public records specialist had a much lower rate, I believe 20%. So if we approve this, are we approving a, a forever ability to pay uh, on that specific position up to that 50, 51, 15? Yeah, that's a two-part question. Dale, if you're there, I think you have some background on uh, our accounts payable payroll uh, specialist. Uh, sure, I'd like to address that. So uh, on the uh, offer letter that I provided to Angela, our payroll accounts payable person, um, I gave her the top of the offered wage schedule that we had advertised, which was... Uh, $4,068. And typically, uh, we pay a lesser amount until they pass a probationary. Uh, based upon her experience where she came from a neighboring city down the way, and her understanding of vision, 
in this offer letter, I told her that after six months, I would make her equal to our our pay for the utility billing person. So I made a, a, a commitment there where, uh, you know, not giving consideration. Well, and then I was trying to locate that 2% letter, but, you know, I, I believe in the letter, I offered her the $4,068. I told her the first of the year, we were scheduled to receive a 2% COLA, which also affected the utility billing person. And then I told her after the completion of six months, satisfactory probation completion, that I would make her par equal to the utility billing person. So and, the the forty one forty nine, I actually, as I do the math, that that just shows a a uh, just a cola two percent. I I don't have any issues with that two percent. Right. Uh, yeah. And, the the, con the concern is is that increase in pay. Um, was there a discussion prior that that allowed us to to offer that uh, since since we weren't since that position wasn't uh, uh, set at that high rate. Well, uh, before Jan, our previous person left, her and uh, Doreen were equal. They were paid the same for those two positions. So when Angela came in, I offered her, a, will say, a low ball amount just to start out. And then after six months, I would make her equal. So it would be back to that original situation. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I, I don't, in, in that case, I don't have any uh, concerns with that uh, so, so I would. So so as currently proposed, if, well, so anyhow, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, no, that that makes sense to me. I I get that part. Um, so my my recommendation then, of course, would be the same as as Jackie's. Uh, I do not, although I would also re remove the uh, attorney uh, full time position there. I would not include that in the in the uh, salary approved salaries. So, so then my last part of my question though is of course a public record specialist uh, and has, has that person been being been paid at the previous rate in the new position? Okay, so that, that position has not been filled. It will be filled full-time starting January 1st. Uh, we've had uh, trees over there in training for the last three months. Uh, so she has been pulling the, the current pay that she receives uh, as uh, the Parks and Recreation Coordinator. Um, so on 1 January, she is out of training and she'll be in a full-time uh, capacity there and not providing any support at Parks and Recreation. Uh, what's the difference? Well, there's a, there's a couple of uh, important reasons why uh, her, her uh, pay is following her to that new position. Uh, one is she's got a master's degree uh, in uh, HR as well as in legal compliance. She's got uh, studies uh, in legal compliance, which give her a leg up on her predecessor uh, and, and make her far more qualified and uh, far more capable of, of doing this job uh, uh, to, a, to a higher uh, performance level. Secondly, I know you talked about comparables. I, I didn't list off. Uh, I don't have a set number of cities or set um, uh, equal equal population, equal budget type cities that I go off of. I had 60 different cities that I bounced uh, the payroll uh, expectations of a of a, a public record specialist off of, ranging anywhere from size from Seattle to uh, Euphrata and Sela. And the, the average uh, payroll um, for that individual uh, type uh, job is about $5,700. Um, and that's across the state, both east and west side. Her current payroll per month is $5,100. Um, if you want specific cities off of this list that I went off of, and many of these cities have, like the large cities have they're five deep, 10 deep, even in their public records access departments. But that's because they, they have a higher population. 
we're one deep. I'm, I keep going back to that same issue like I did with our city attorney. Um, that being one deep in a public record specialist job, we need to have somebody who's really sharp and on the ball. We don't have four or five people uh, like they have in Spokane. In Spokane, actually, they have 11. Their average pay ranges from $3,500 to $5,500. Um, in, in Euphreda, they're at, uh, their average pay ranges from 4,700 to 5,150. So that, that and, and you got Kennewick, uh, they have uh, upwards of 10 people uh, in this type of work and their uh, upper pay range is 5,300. Um, Cleelum uh, pay range is 5,364, the top end. Uh, West Richland, $5,400, but, uh, and uh, as well as uh, the city of Richland, they have eight people in this, in this position and their top of their pay range is 54, 93, about $5,500. The going rate for, for one of these individuals that's highly qualified, like Ms. Morales is, is somewhere between $3,700 and in, 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 on our side of the mountains and about $6,000 per month. So uh, we feel very comfortable, the mayor and I, presenting this uh, as uh, uh, a, a, an ongoing uh, pay for the, a, a qualified, a highly qualified uh, public record specialist. And if you haven't been paying attention, she's a very busy lady uh, and uh, she's earning her pay every day. I, I think Ms. Morales is a, is a great asset to the, to the city and great asset to the community. Uh, and that is, is not in question for me. The question is the increase in that specific position. Um, I, I don't see that as being a, I don't, I don't see that as being a position that requires a master's degree and I get it. Uh, getting a master's degree does require a significant amount of effort, but I don't see that as a position as, as being payable to that point. Using, when you justify stuff, uh, pay by using Seattle and Spokane and Richland, I mean, that, those are, those are horrible comparisons. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not okay with those comparisons. You can, if you want to average things out, you can drown in an average of half inch of water if you use the Pacific Ocean as as part of your as part of your comparable. So I, I don't think using statewide comparables is appropriate for the city of Sela. Uh, I would prefer to have a a lower comparable, a more realistic comparable to the city of Sela. So if your justification to us is Seattle pays this and Richland pays that and Spokane pays that. That's not justification enough for me to, to move forward on something like that. And her, her master's degree is in human resources, not in public, re, public uh, records. Um, ironically, we've had discussions about human resources. What a, what a better person to fill that. I, I think that should be on the table in discussion as well, but uh, I don't see this as a position where you would pay for a master's degree. Um, I get it. I, if, uh, I get that staff won't be happy about it, um, but I'm, I'm not okay with it. And, if, and if, if staff has been promised one thing and, uh, and they don't get it, then that's not the fault of the council. And so uh, as the city administrator, your responsibility would be to advise the staff that this is probably the best decision moving forward. If, if, the count, if the city staff comes back and hears from their city administrator that the council didn't want it, so that you didn't get it, that's, uh, then I don't believe you're doing your job appropriately. Well, thank you for your advice on leadership. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, once again, uh, you're dismissing the, 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 the fact that this job is one deep. In Seattle, they have dozens of people doing this job. But we Spokane, also have 8,000 people. Yeah, in Spokane, they also have dozens, if not, well, in Seattle, it's not just dozens. It's 164, to be precise. We're not Seattle, though. No, but, but, but my point is, uh, they're deep, they have lots of people doing it, and we have one. So you got to make sure that you're paying that person what they're worth. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you're, that's, you're comparing Spokane, which has 200,000 people. We're not going to agree. There's not going to be an HR uh, uh, specialist. 
Uh, we're asking for a public records specialist. That's what we need. Uh, you can vote as you see fit. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Cliff. Well, we're discussing different positions. Um, you, you mentioned as we were going through the individual adjustments um, on the printout of December 8th. The one I got is actually dated December 2nd. Mm -hmm. And it has a place, uh, it has a uh, fire department administrative assistant as a new position. Um, I don't see it on the ordinance. Is this a misprint in a draft copy that I just ended up having? Or I thought that the, I thought that the person that we were to the fire department was a part-time, what was used to be split between city hall. Are we double funding a position or is this a misprint on? Well, uh, I'd say rather than misprint uh, Cliff, what, what you pointed out to me is an omission that uh, I failed to enter under fire department, this new position. So on the ordinance, there's actually the uh, 4669 um, addition to the fire department on the ordinance one? Yes, correct. It should include one additional position with the description fire department uh, administrative assistant and the uh, current wage rate would be at 46.69, same as the other administrative assistants. And I do thank you for noting that. So is, is, um, is that position already filled? Do we have somebody in that already? No, no, Cliff, it's a new position they intend to create the first of the year. Okay. Jackie. Yo, can you uh, clarify that new position? Isn't that um, absorbing a 60% position? Um, going to a hundred percent position. Well, bringing uh, somebody over from city hall over to the fire department full time, but they were a part timer. And yes, that's factual that, that they were a part timer. Thank you. Hey, Jackie, as clarification, I think that was a uh, uh, an hourly rate previously that's under that part-time section that will move to the fire. Well, and in in fact, though, we, we are gonna replace that position here at City Hall and still maintain an hourly position here, working half-time. Jackie, you have another question? Is that the office assistant early wage 1813, Dale? Yes, that's correct, Jackie. Okay, thank you. Council, any more discussion on this? Madam Mayor, I'd like to move to accept the ordinance as presented with the following changes to uh, drop the position adjustments for the department heads to reduce the position adjustments for the other uh, other post by one half. And Kevin, uh, uh, what about uh, Ty Jones? 
where where Jackie wanted to remove his hundred and fifty. Uh, he, uh, he is the Public Works Utility Supervisor. I would leave that. So we have a motion to approve it with the adjustments that Jackie provided, um, leaving Ty Jones where he's at. Is that correct? And reducing the others by one right half. two half. Do we have a second, Jackie? You're muted. I'd like to ask Kevin on his motion if he's wanting us to relook at this in six months in regards to the uh, possible second half or not. You didn't clarify in the motion, which is fine. Okay. My issue with that is how do you, we're, uh, we're doing the budget. How do we relook at it yeah. if we're looking at the yearly budget? That, that would be a correct assessment. You're, you're, what you would be approving here would be set for the year and anything that we decided in June would be a budget adjustment. Okay. So we have we have a motion to approve by Kevin with the adjustments. Do we have a second? I second. We have a second by Jackie. Roll call, Monica. Um, Russ? I, can we have some clarification? Uh, are we including the adjustment made by Mr. Novabelsky with the fire uh, administrative assistant? Is that part of the motion that was not stated? And and are we removing the uh, are we removing the pay for the city attorney? It is with the uh, what Dale presented and the city attorney re, uh, remains. Okay. Are we? Is everybody clear on that now? Yes. Roger. Take the motion again, please. We move to we accept the ordinance as presented with the following changes that the uh, position adjustments for the department heads be dropped, that the other position adjustments be uh, cut in half uh, to 150. And with the uh, change that Dale noted for the fire district. Okay, so that is the motion by Kevin. It's been seconded by Jackie. Uh, Cliff? Uh, clarification on the public works utility supervisor. Are we doing? Well, with Ty Jones? Yeah, with Ty. Is, where is that with the uh, actual motion? That remains. So, so he would receive the 2% plus 150 a month for 7805. Yes. Okay, we have a motion to approve with the adjustments by Kevin, a second by Jackie. Roll call, Monica. Councilman Wickenhagen? Yes. Councilwoman Matson? Yes. Councilwoman Vargas? No. Councilman Peterson? Yes. Councilman Bell? Yes. Councilman Costello? No. Councilman Carlson? No. Motion passes four to three. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Novobelsky. Well, uh, what we have now is an uh, ordinance which needs some dollar amounts revised mm -hmm. uh, based upon the uh, changes. Um, so um, I do have a worksheet that where I can make these changes 
for these department heads and these administrative assistants. And uh, then I can uh, disclose to you what those uh, financial changes are gonna be. But of course, that is gonna take me, uh, I'll say less than five minutes. Okay. So I don't know if you want to recess. Madam Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, I re request a recess for 10 minutes. Uh, so Mr. Novobelsky can uh, do Have his time. work. Okay. Thank you. So we are now going to go into a recess for 10 minutes. We will be back at 744.